Hello and welcome to this video where I will be reacting to all 36 songs from Malta's national final. So I did manage to catch the first semi-final live but due to friends, family and work I wasn't able to catch the rest of them live. So I will be watching all of the songs now. Because of my five listens per songs limit, I will just listen to clips of the first nine songs and the other 27 songs in full. I do kind of remember uh, what I liked and what I didn't. I thought some songs needed a bit of a revamp. The only like actual title uh, that I remember is the Cloud Maker from Project Oxygen. And because that was hyped before the semi-final and everything else I didn't hear much about before. I found it very fascinating to watch the final, to be honest. Um, didn't realise I was able to. But Maltese sounds very fun. It sometimes sounds like Italian, sometimes sounds like Turkish. And then at a point I'm like, well, I don't, I have no clue what they're saying at all. Um, I have never learnt Maltese and I don't intend to in the near future. But it does sound like a very fascinating language. And I did enjoy how they made fun of the contestants. I was able to gather that, but that's because they were using a lot of English words. Like, I think Patrick Starr or something in there as well. It's good to have a bit of humour and uh, I actually like the title of where they host a national final uh, that it's show but spelt with the X presumably because of Cyrillic or something like that I'm not too sure but hello Robin <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, see her ears I like the, the title that it's XOW looks cool to people who don't speak Maltese but do speak English that looks a bit like wow but with an X and X is always cool and then it's actually just called show I think that's very fun I hope that isn't the meaning to people who speak Maltese, but I did really enjoy it. And uh, I was a bit confused because after Cloudmaker performed, they were then right immediately back in their seats, not even a second later. So some part of it wasn't live. I don't know which part wasn't live. I hope the performances were live, but I don't know. Also starting the national final half an hour late was a bit odd. I was in England at the time and I forgot about the time difference. So it worked out well for me because after about half an hour, I was like, oh, it's meant to have started. And I did catch the first song uh, in full. So it's lucky for me, but it's not very professional. Anyway, let's stop rambling and get right into it. I will not be recording my reactions because that feels like a waste of footage and too much to edit. If I've got anything that I really need to say right after hearing it, I'll turn the camera back on and uh, say that. But otherwise, I'll see you once I've heard all 36 songs and written down my notes. I've so far managed to listen to only the recap of the very first song and Robin's decided to join me. Uh, thought I'd turn the camera on because she's really cute. And that's the whole reason I set this thing up, is for you to lie down there. Don't know why she didn't want to join me for the intro. But she's here now, so she'll be watching the songs as well. Right, Robin? Yeah. Let's get back to watching the songs. Phew! Okay, so I've listened to all 36 songs now, and uh, wow! There were loads and there were highs, definitely. I will admit I do have an absolutely least favourite, but I will not be revealing that, because that's mean. I'll start with just some overarching thoughts. Uh, there were quite a few songs in Maltese which I really liked. That was quite nice because I expect Malta to just kind of always send English so that was that was nice to see. Maybe one of them will make it to Malmo. There are many dance breaks or <laughs> small dance breaks. That's uh, fun to see and obviously from Eleni Ferreira to Chanel to Noah Kirel, um, they're becoming more and more popular in Eurovision which I think is fun. And I guess Luca Hani we could also count towards that. There were also a few songs where I thought oh this melody sounds a bit plagiarised. I couldn't quite place the songs that they're plagiarised from, but I was like, I recognise this melody a bit too much for it to just be completely original to this Maltese semi-final. Whether that's intentional or not, I don't know, but there were a few of them where I noticed it and I was like, that's probably a bit too long of a melody to have taken from somewhere else. It was really difficult to narrow down the songs I'd like to talk about right now because there were actually quite a handful of good ones or like just slightly underbaked ones that I think uh, with the, the amount of time they'll get before Eurovision, which is probably about four months after being chosen, maybe three, we could improve the song enough to where it will, we will have a good chance at maybe even getting in the top ten. I don't think Malta will win this year. <laughs> I don't think any of the songs are quite that level, but you never know. Never know with revamps and stuff. But yeah, I quite enjoyed a lot of the songs, and I think, to be honest, I'll say what my favourites are, and approximately in that order as well. But I'm not sure exactly how much they're my favourites just in general as songs and how much they're my favourites for being on Eurovision. Probably more the latter, but it's a good mix. I'll start with uh, my honourable mentions first, the ones that I considered putting in the top five but didn't make it. That would be Balsa, because I think it'd be cool to have something in Maltese, and that was my favourite one of the completely Maltese ones. Cloudmaker, because I like the hype about it and I like their vibe, but... The song isn't quite for me. Let's talk about love. I like the song, but it didn't quite stand out in my mind enough to be put in my top five. Venom was cool and powerful, 
but again didn't stand out quite enough and very similar situation with moving on ghost and fading out of those probably ghost is my favorite three songs i would absolutely love to see because we always need fun songs at Eurovision but two of them are a bit underbaked still and uh, but, but but all three of them would certainly stand out on the stage in Malmö even though we haven't got any other songs I doubt there will be many people going for this style of song the first one being Topic Blah Blah I really enjoyed the performance and uh, it's slightly underbaked but it's almost perfect for what it is I, I would absolutely love to see something like that in Malmö but I don't think we'll be getting this one unfortunately Feather Flight was very interesting very good voice and good song, uh, just slightly unnerving presentation. I don't really know what, how to put it, but I, I wouldn't I wouldn't be mad if that went to Malmo. And then finally, somewhat predictably, Banana would be iconic, which definitely be one of the uh, most different songs of the year. And I'd love to see it in Malmo. It could, it could go. That one I think has the best chances of these three to actually going. But now, without any further ado, my top five going five, four, three, two, one would be Man, Breathe, Miles Away, Karma, and Sirena. I really enjoyed that there was some Maltese in Sirena, but it was mostly in English. They seem to have their performance pretty much down already. Obviously, they could change it up loads for Malmo, but they were ready to perform on a big stage, not just the semi final one. And I think that's really cool. I, I would quite like to see Sirena and Malmo, but any of the other five or even. <laughs> you know 15 that i mentioned would be really cool so uh, that surprised me because after i watched the recaps for the first semi-final and i got to the second and third semi-final i was thinking there are quite a few somewhat weak songs in here not that they couldn't get improved with the time they have until malmo but as of right now they're not <laughs> eurovision stays ready but then in the fourth semi-final i put a little star next to nearly everything so the fourth semi-final was very strong about man i really like the confidence i think that the guy has a cool voice i'm not a fan of the lyrics so so much but it's a cool it's some cool music and he did a little drive and it was fun about breathe the look looked a bit like a bathrobe but uh it's got a cool like rockish style which i always enjoy very good voice and generally i just really vibe with it uh i was bopping along probably the most to that one as it was playing so that's always a good sign about miles away love the 80s synth uh, she really sells a song and uh, it's, re it's really fun. She's got a pretty good voice. I think by the time you get to Mama, it could, could get even better. Mama obviously runs back and it's a very, very good song. Uh, it's one of the most finished ones. I would say this one is basically ready to be put on stage. Just need to figure out some graphics, but it's one of the most finished sounding songs. Uh, it's got some fun lyrics and very good singing. Good melody as well. Really enjoyed the melody in the chorus, which... I didn't put down for many of the songs so that was nice and then about sirena i i did really like that it's both languages that uh they're kind of already interacting with each other nicely on stage so they've got some kind of fake choreography figured out and i like groups at eurovision it's always more fun there's more people to relate to for people watching eurovision i think they've got good voices as well i think this this could do quite well if it did get through don't quite know why it's become my favorite it's not my normal style but i did really enjoy it Anyway, those are all my thoughts on the Maltese semi-finals and I'm excited to find out what song we're getting in January. Unfortunately, the next semi-final that we know of is Czechia's and I say unfortunately because it's happening on the day of my Joker Out concert. So by the time I'm back home and I've sorted everything out, I don't know when I'll be able to react to it. I'll try and avoid finding out who won or if we find out the songs earlier, I'll listen to the songs earlier. But if we only listen to them on the 4th of December, then I'll probably know who's won before watching the national final, but I'll probably watch it anyway, just to see what other options there were. But I look forward to hearing the Czech songs, and then we've got obviously Festivali Kengas from Albania uh, to look forward to this year as well. Maybe the Netherlands will announce someone in December as well, I've heard, so quite a few announcements happening. It does really feel like the, the season is in full swing, including uh, Taranta Alex's uh, odd comment. <laughs> which I will not be making any further comments on. It was nice to listen to all the Maltese songs today. I hope you enjoyed the video, hope you got something out of it. I'm gonna be so excited to have all these videos to look back on once we find out what songs actually go through. And have a lovely rest of your day. Enjoy the simmering of Eurovision 2024 as it's building up. I will see you in the next one whenever that shows up in your feed. Bye!